All right, for today we're gonna to be looking at the Caliburn and the other Caliburn variants. It's gonna be super exciting. One thing that's been asked a lot is how do you take it apart? How do you put it together? How do you keep it clean? What do I need to do? And all other questions. And so this video will answer that. You have been asking it, asking for it for a while now, so we will do it. So this is the takedown version of the Caliburn. This is the Elite, and then the Rival and the Mega versions, respectively. And this little video will show you how to take it down. Um, put it back together, maintain it, all that good stuff. So, for the takedown portion, we'll just go ahead and jump to that. There's three pins, and you just pull up on the pin. Boop. One. On the back side, there's also another one. Two. And you can take out the top section with just those, those two. Now this gives you access to the RAM. If you want to upgrade the RAM to an aluminum RAM or Dellen RAM or replace the RAM, you broke the RAM, you can replace it, and this one actually needs replacing because I broke a screw, over tightened it so it snapped, but that's how you can get access to the RAM, super easy, and then the back side, you have access to the plunger, I don't know if you can see that very well in the video, but there it is, uh, yeah, it's over there. So you can take out the plunger, again, upgrade it, clean it, or replace it if you want, you got the o-ring on there. One important thing that I found out makes it a lot easier to get the plunger in and out or even the front half O-rings in and out is to put a little chamfer on the inside of your plunger tube. So take a pair of scissors or a deburring tool and go ahead and ream out the inside of that if it hasn't already been done. That'll make it so when you're inserting the front halves or the plunger, the O-ring will slide in a lot easier. That's just pops in and out super easy. Um, if that cut isn't made clean enough, it'll get caught. To take out the spring, you just slide the spring out, and it's that easy. If you don't have the takedown Magwell version and you want to replace the spring or to the plunger, you have to undo these um, screws here. I'm going to do that for you real quick. The first thing you do is you'll have to take out the butt plate, so unscrew the butt plate screw while keeping a hole onto the nut on the back and you can unscrew it and it just pops right out like that that comes off and then you have to undo the either acorn nut or locking nut or regular nut depending on what version you have just unscrew that mine will all hopefully be able to be taken apart by hand then you have to take off this butt plate and then you have access to the spring but if you want access to the ramrod or the plunger or everything else on a regular non take down caliber, you have to then go through and take out the rest of these nuts. There's four nuts that you have to take out here. You would unscrew all those, take those out, and the whole thing will slide apart. And it's that easy. But if you want to get to the ram, you have to slide out everything. And it can take a lot of time if you're not skilled at it or don't have the right tools or are in a hurry and in the middle of a war and you're nervous and your handshake but with the takedown magwell it's really easy to take out the spring but not everything else so tighten that nut back down and screw it back in and then to get the front ends back on switch out the bottom half of the magwell you just take out the third pin on the magwell here and there you go, you're ready to put on a new magwell. So let's go ahead and throw on the rival magwell here because that's my favorite. So you've got the rival, you go ahead and slide that in. Then you put the pin back in. And if your parts are well machined or well post-processed and drilled out, then you should be able to slide it on with no hassle at all. And these will just slide in, just like that. Then you put the pins in. See if I can do this while giving you guys a good view. That's one pin, and then the second pin, just like that. And there's Mega. You can now shoot some Mega darts. And this one has the aluminum ramrod that I'll probably show you later, with the O-rings attached. So it'll, in theory, hit much better FPS. Sweet. I only had 
had two Megas in there. Mega. We can take out and off again. You just slide the pins out. And if the pins are um, too loose in there, they might pop. If the pins are too loose in there, they might pop up on their own due to vibrations and stuff. And so that's not good. So on all of mine, I always make them a little tighter rather than loose. But over time, they may loosen up. And so you can just throw on a bit of Loctite or something. This is the Mega Aluminum Ramrod. So you won't have any leaks through the barrel, but you may have some leaks through the ram depending on uh, your print quality. And this one leaks through the base a little bit. Uh, but that's easier to fix than leaking through the ram. So there's that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And then we have the arrival front end. Same thing, you can put, you can either actually do all three at the same time if you're in a really big hurry, but I haven't tried to do this while being shot at in a war, so I don't know how easy it actually is, but you can slip on both halves and throw the pins in. Sometimes I like to do the pins on the top first to hold the bottom in together, at least for storage. Push those pins in and there you go. Now you've got a rival burn. There you go. A rival mag. And this is actually the weakest of all the springs. Is that not empty? There's actually the hole you can see the rival through if you look. But yeah, it's empty. This is the weakest of all the springs possible. And so I did not shoot those very far, very hard. And to switch back to the Elite version, you just pull up on the pins. Just gonna let that drop because why not? Push it from the bottom. And then pull up on the pin. And then the pin on the rotor side. And then the whole front will go ideally. Pop. Oh, there we go. Thunder almost came out. And then go back to the Elite version. Before I do that, there's a couple of points I wanted to mention. Um, you can use locked up washers on the whole thing, it is possible, um, and not have to use regular uh, hex washers. But you have to make sure that the locking part is pointed forward, like these ones. So they don't actually have a functional locking, but it's the only way you get them in for the couplers. And this coupler has been printed in 100% PLA, 100% um, infill. It's got a five, two millimeter perimeters or wall thickness. So that's five layer thicknesses on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And it hasn't broken yet. I've used this in a couple of wars including two NIC events in the past about month, month and a half, and it hasn't broken yet. My first one that wasn't printed on these settings was printed just at the default settings I used for the old Magwells. It broke after, you know, the first 20 shots maybe, but this one has not fa failed yet. It's got pretty much the full cosmetics on it. It's got the R-Max. I didn't like the really long braille because I never used them and it added extra weight and I had a big problem with weight on it, especially with cameras on the front. So I tried to minimize it as best I could. And the parts in the back here um, are printed at 100% infill to give them extra weight to it. I'll probably have to figure out some way to get even more weight, probably add some aluminum inserts in there or something to give it more weight. But this has been very handy in events. It's got um, a D-ring hanger um, for picture frames so I can have a sling attachment on the top back because it doesn't have any rails in the back and it only has spots for sling points on the bottom and that wasn't as ideal as having it on the top. And so I added a D-ring hanger on this caliburn. All my other caliburns I use for myself have this D-ring hanger and they actually work really well. Um, they're not super strong, they're just 
pretty thin for hanging out pictures, but they get the job done unless you're prone to throw your blaster around a lot while it's on you or while it's slung. A lot of Caliburns don't have the black spacer rod on the thumb hole stock because you have to cut off about a quarter of an inch um, to half an inch in order to fit the thumb hole um, stock um, around the spacer rod. So a lot of people have it off, but I didn't want a silver rod sticking out the back. It looked kind of weird, so I left it in and I cut it down. And that's it. I've also never had a sear or trigger break or fail or even wear out on my Caliburns or anybody's Caliburns who I've sold to. And at least I haven't mentioned it. But if you wanted an aluminum piece, that's doable as well. Um, the foam back plate, butt plate on a lot of Caliburns, if your rods are just the right size, which I used to make them, and it doesn't stick out this extra little bit, I don't really like it because it looks bad, but it's not sticking out too much. But what it does is it'll help if the butt foam rotates because they often do that. It'll rotate and this will keep it centered at least to some degree so that way it's not flipping out sideways. Um, onto the caliber itself. This is an 18 inch barrel um, without scar and it, um, it's got a muzzle plate, a trench piece to hold it in place, keep it tight. Screws on either side. It does make these little indents in the barrel that some people do not like and I personally don't like them either but there's not really an easy way around it and it's purely aesthetic. It doesn't affect function in any way, so it doesn't really bother me. That's about it. Put this guy back together. And I had to move my scope further up than normally. We usually sit about right here, but because of the pins, couldn't get it out. So, there you go. Elite Caliber, K31 spring, about 150 FPS with just a K31, or 135 FPS. Okay, that ricochet is gonna hurt me. In the eye. Oh. There we go. I forgot to mention that the lubricant I use for the Caliber is just a super lube because it was. Um, I believe like Catherine Slug uses as well, but it's uh, silicone lubricating grease um, So silicone it won't eat away your o-rings or anything um, I don't know if you can find this in a lot of hardware stores I actually looked at my local Lowe's and Home Depot and they didn't really have very many good lubricants that were in a big enough container or silicone based weren't sprays Lowe's had like only all sprays which was weird and I even looked in the plumbing and hardware section and plumbing didn't have very many good things either, but I'll look back. But anyway, it's looking blue, super blue, good stuff. And the scope I'm using is just a red dot sight because I only need it to help with aiming left and right. Elevation, I can kind of gauge with my own um, sense of distance. However, it would be cool if they had a scope that um, had elevation lines on it, but I, this is probably the cheapest one I could find on Amazon as well. And so it definitely gets the job done. There you go. Also, spring uh, sling mount for the upper portion is still lacking on this. Before I had a piece of parachute cord going through one of the holes in the railgasm um, that I linked to, and that actually worked a little better than this because this is like it's in the way, it's a little larger, bulky, but I can't do that anymore because of the Armax. So, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll figure it out later.